Do you like oranges? The sullen, smaller detective comes into the room. His name is Malin. He stands beside me, but he doesn't say anything. Colin continues with the questions. He lists off an array of organisations, and then more names. He asks about my father. Why have I no brothers and sisters? I don't answer these questions either. I look at Malin. He sticks his tongue out at me. I look away. I'm shivering. Colin asks, what's wrong? I tell him that I'm cold. Malin walks to the pew seat. There is silence in the room. Colin stares at me and then down the length of my body. An orange rolls across the floor from Malin. I watch as Colin picks it up. A second orange is also rolled along the floor. Colin picks this up as well. He holds the oranges in both hands. He smiles at me. Have I ever been asked to join any political organisations? I ask him again if I can have something to keep myself warm. You can fucking freeze for all we care, he replies. Colin places the oranges on the table. He doesn't resume the questioning. He leaves the folder of letters open, but he takes a notepad from his case. He begins to write in this. A good length of time goes by. No one says anything. I wonder at first what he's writing down, but I have trouble concentrating. I feel very cold. I have my arms wrapped around me. During this, as he writes, I think I hear him ask, Do you like oranges? I'm not sure. His voice is barely audible, and in any case, the question seems odd. I don't say anything. After a few minutes, he literally jumps from the table at me, knocking it over completely. I move out of his way, but this makes him worse. He shouts at me to stand. He points at the original spot of where I had been. I go there. I look instinctively to see where his hands are. He shouts, Do you like oranges? I reply yes, and look over at Malin. Colin's voice booms again. His face is red and flustered. Did I tell you to look at him? No, I say, and look away. This seems to calm him. Colin goes to the formica table and sets it back on its feet. He's breathing heavily. He picks up his pen, the pad and folder. One of the oranges has rolled into a corner. He gets this. Then he arranges everything as it was meticulously, not paying any attention to me. He sits again and begins to write. A long time goes by. I am very cold. I keep rubbing my arms with my hands to keep warm. Neither of them pay any attention. Malin stares from the side seat. Colin reads and makes notes. Eventually Colin stops. He gets up and walks over to the far side of the room opposite Malin. Then he walks out of my field of vision to the back. There is quiet again for a long time. The room is very still. No noise. I hear nothing until I feel him right behind me, against my buttocks. I stand as steady as I can, motionless. I'm sorry, he says. His voice is soft, even apologetic. His breath is in my ear about the oranges. I nod. It's nothing personal. I say I realise that. He laughs quietly behind me. I'm very unsure. I think about what he might do. There is two of them and I am alone. The room also. I have heard no one outside, no noises in the whole time I've been in here. Who knows that I am here? You see... I won't be giving Detective Malin one either, he continues. I say nothing. I just feel him move against me behind the bulk of his crotch. He asks me, do I understand? I say yes. I feel his hand move around my waist. It is near my belly button. He is laughing and beginning to enclose me and press. His breath is close. I don't think you do, he says. There is silence. Suddenly he turns me. An orange is put under my nose. Its skin is coarse and cracked and I can smell the essence when he squeezes it. It is fresh in the room. See now? I shake my head. I'm confused and cold and I don't understand why he's asking me about the orange. He pushes it into my face, jerking my head backwards. It isn't an eating variety, he says, and laughs.